storyteller, was born in Peru and raised in Los Angeles. Rosa Navarrete has traveled the world as a freelance videographer and an editor, and she also works as an arts administrator in the dance world. And this past spring, she shortcased, uh, showcased a short comedic work at the annual Chicanas, Cholas y Chisme annual play festival at Casa 0101 Theater in Boyle Heights. So please, please, please welcome Rosa Navarrete. One morning, in the summer of 2004, a gift came to me. That morning, I rolled off my bed, pinned my hair with a pencil, picked up an, my new guitar, and began playing the chords to the song you just heard, entitled Calloused. I purchased a guitar a few days before. You see, this guitar was a rebellion against men in my life who had an act for telling me what I could not do. After I bought her, I asked my father, why didn't you ever teach me to play guitar? He replied with, you never asked. It's conversations like this that often make me think about what life would have been like had I been born a boy. When I asked my boyfriend to teach me to strum, he replied to me with, oh, in the kindest way possible, a guitar was a poor man's instrument. I told him, well, <laughs> I've been poor all my life, so hand it over. <laughs> Pero no. He continued to say, if you notice, a guitar is in the shape of a woman. Thus, it's meant to be held by a man. A man knows how to play a woman. I replied with, did you know that a woman can also play with herself? <laughs> but he had made up his mind. I wasn't ready or worthy of the instrument. What was happening? How did I get to my early 20s in the early 2000s with this kind of bull? Had I just blinded myself to machismo? Was I dating the person I dreaded of being involved with all my life, the man who tells me what to do, wear, and say? Had all the memories of my childhood not taught me the lesson, the most important lesson my mother demonstrated by leaving my dad? No one has the right to tell you what you can and cannot do. Only you have that power. I just wanted to strum a guitar, play songs on my own, stuff like Foolish Games by Jewel, Strong Enough by Sheryl Crow. Instead, my boyfriend greeted me with doubt. And the moment he said that I couldn't do it was the moment I decided I was gonna learn to play the guitar on my own. Back to my room, I'm writing lyrics to a story of a memory I have been afraid of revisiting for years. Something buried deep, in, deep inside of me. It carried weight in history. It was ancient. It came from a twisted, colonized culture, a history of pain and hitting the closest thing to you because there is no <laughs> control over your fist when injustice is overpowering your voice. A history of being silenced and made invisible because you did not belong to a European kingdom. The origins of trauma, of physical, emotional, and verbal abuse can be felt to this day. Injustice and not knowing how to express hurt, lashing out and smashing flesh to flesh against something that loves you because you know it will always see the good in you. Things I had seen as a child of overheard through gossip sessions between my tias primas and the history of the fist against the women I loved, how prevalent and common it was to receive various versions of it. As I strummed and wrote down the lyrics, a woman, manifested before me. She remembered everything. From the moment they came to La Tierra, to the moment my mother stood up for herself and hit my father back. This woman was tired of being silenced and she rose up at the sensation of being told, you cannot do that. She picked up my body, lifted my hand and made me write this song, which after finishing put me in tears because I remember those nights of confusion of hiding under a table as a child, of holding my little sister, telling her jokes over the yelling, over the sound of flesh to flesh. This woman, tired, unafraid, and pulsing words out of me through song. I judged the song immediately. I thought, ugh, what a downer. It doesn't even have a happy ending. Who wants to hear this? 
But in that moment in time, I needed to hear it, and it was healing. The song left as quickly as it came. I mean, I am no Beethoven, as you can see. <laughs> but that was one of the most magical experiences I have ever encountered in my life as a writer and a quasi-musician. And this unapologetic woman's spirit was in the room with me, my muse, my justicia, my ida. She was me and I was her. I have never been struck by a man. And surprisingly, my parents became tame, boring people once they split up. I suppose there was just too much fire between them. I don't judge them for it. Trauma is a twisted energy that jabs when it can. My parents had come from a time in Peru when hitting a woman was a common way to solve marital issues. Fear keeps people trapped that way. The longer you're afraid, the more trapped you feel. And you don't know how to get out, so you endure and eventually begin thinking that you deserve unhappiness. And you stay. You stay for the kids, because of religion, because of the way they may think. My mother chose to walk away when I was nine years old, and I was proud of her. I have two less vivid memories to share with you. The first is my mother dancing to Peruvian Creole music on the cajon festejo, my dad yelling lyrics at the top of his lung, our family laughing, a fun moment when they were still together. The last memory I will share with you is me in Peru playing this song for my grandmother when I finished and looked up from the strings, I saw her in tears. I wondered why. <laughs> she did not speak a word of English. She told me it sounded familiar, like she's heard it before. I thought, oh my God, this was her song too. Thank you.